Good evening. On behalf of the Hopkins and Women's Club, I would like to welcome you to the 29th annual Meet the Candidates Night. My name is Nancy Clark, and I will be the moderator for this program. The Hopkins and Women's Club was founded in 1920, when women were gaining the right to vote. And each year, we organize this Candidates Night to aid all citizens as they determine who to cast their ballot for in the upcoming town election. We welcome new members to the Women's Club and encourage anyone interested in our community service organization to visit our website at hopkintonwc.com. I will now introduce the candidates in attendance tonight. For two open seats on the Board of Selectmen, Brendan Tedstone, who is running on nomination papers, Michael Umina, running on nomination papers, Margaret Wigan, running on nomination papers and the Democratic Caucus nominee, and Claire Wright, running on nomination papers and the Republican Caucus nominee. For the Board of Assessors, Mary Jo Lafreniere, candidate for re-election, running on nomination papers and the Democratic Caucus nominee. For the Board of Health, Philip Cohen, candidate for re-election, running on nomination papers and the Republican Caucus nominee. For the Board of Health, Jennifer Flanagan, Democratic Caucus nominee. For the Board of Library Trustees, Michael McNamara, candidate for re-election, running on nomination papers. For Commissioner of Trust Fund, Maureen Bumiller, candidate for re-election, running on nomination papers, and the Democratic Caucus nominee. For Constable, Michael Hayes, the Democratic Caucus nominee, and Michael Umina, candidate for re-election, running on nomination papers. For the Hopkinton Housing Authority, Nancy Clay, candidate for re-election, and the Republican Caucus nominee. For the Parks and Recreation Commission, Eric Sonnet, candidate for re-election, and the Republican Caucus nominee, and Kelly Karp, Democratic Caucus nominee. For the Planning Board, David Paul, running on nomination papers. For the School Committee, Nancy Richards Kavanaugh, running on nomination papers. For Town Clerk, Connor Deegan, running on nomination papers. And Henry Knicky, the Republican Caucus nominee. For Town Moderator, Bruce Carlin, candidate for re-election and the Democratic Caucus nominee, and Thomas Garabedian, running on nomination papers and the Republican Caucus nominee. We will begin with an opening statement from each candidate. Each person will have a limit of two minutes for opening remarks. Our timers this evening are Women's Club members and student volunteers. They will hold up a sign periodically to indicate how much time candidates have remaining. If necessary, they will ring a bell to signify the end of two minutes. Audience members, please hold your applause until all of the candidates have finished speaking. Now will the first two candidates step to the podiums. We will begin with Brendan Tedstone, candidate for the Board of Selectmen. <clears throat> Good evening, Nancy, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Brendan Tedstone, and I'm running for Selectman. Um, I am the sixth generation of family member to live in Hopkinton. My kids make the seventh generation. I grew up here, um, call it home. Um, I'm a nurse. I worked as a nurse at a maximum security prison for three years. Now I'm a nurse supervisor at a hospital in Natick. Um, my past employment uh, experience is 
I, uh, I worked on a committee to review licensure, licensure issues with physicians for 14 years. I'm used to making hard but fair decisions. Been married almost 10 years. Those aren't always hard and fair decisions. <laughs> um, the Cultural Arts Center in town is where my mother grew up. It's where her bedroom was. The, where the high school is, is where my grandparents had a farm. I've worked on the fire department for, as a volunteer for over 10 years when I was younger, formed a symbiotic relationship with the police. I worked with fire chiefs Arthur Stewart, Ricky McMillan, Gary Doherty, and Ken Clark. Very proud to have worked for them. Uh, the police chiefs that I worked with during those times, Jerry Bowker, Billy McRoberts, Tom Irvin, Rick Flannery, and Chuck Wallace. Also very proud. Um, I worked for the DPW in some fashion for 10 years. Uh, one of the things I learned working for Bobby Bartlett is that you work for Bobby Bartlett, you weren't working for the town. He was the town. That's where my infusion in my pride of Hopkinton came in. Um, Bobby was a great guy. Cook Cumlin, Charlie McIntyre, Hank Fredette, all these guys in town that are no longer here. They infused pride in Hopkinton. And uh, if you ever knew Hank Fredette, if you didn't have pride in Hopkinton, he would infuse it with, your, with his right. So uh, I'm here running for selectman. I'm hoping that I can get your vote and uh, work on Hopkinton to bring it back to the way it used to be. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Michael Yumina. I'm senior. I am uh, running for the Office of Selectman, and uh, I too have a long history in the town of Hopkinton, having moved here in the fifth grade um, back in 1963, so that'll tell you how old I am. Um, anyway, during my tenure in the town of Hopkinton, I attended Hopkinton Public Schools from, from the fifth grade until the end, and then uh, spent a year at UMass Amherst, which I was not greatly fond of, and ended up um, as a student at Brigham Young University, where I graduated after about six or seven years of going when I could afford it and when not when I couldn't. Um, so, uh, and I have some more time uh, studying at UMass Lowell for another three years, working on physics and electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. I couldn't decide which was best. But anyway, during the time that I have been here in town, you probably have seen me stand up at town meeting, uh, usually invoking the ghost of Joe Pratt, because <clears throat> whenever I see something that I don't agree with, I am gonna stand up and I'm gonna talk about it. And I'm hoping that people listen, because I am a nonpartisan politician I don't believe in belonging to political parties because I don't believe in being subject to political parties, which was the same idea that George Washington had. He said if the political parties ever gain control of this country, that it, the party would be our ruination. Okay, I believe in him. I believe in the Constitution, the Second Amendment, the right to private property, all those good things that made America great. And I too have worked in the private sector and I have experience working in for uh, several different kinds of companies, and I have always kept Hopkinton's, go uh, Hopkinton's success as my goal. Thank you very much. Margie Wigan. Thank you. My name is Margie Wigan, and I am here to help Hopkinton. I hope that um, if you have two votes for Selectman, that you would choose me as one of your two votes. The reason that I would like to be Selectman for you is because I love Hopkinton. The charm, the natural resources, the schools, all of these things are what keep me here and what I want to continue. I've watched the increased development and growth recently. These are things that are good for us in a way and I want to make sure that as we grow, we can still be Hopkinton and still have our small town values, friendliness, charm, natural resources. My background, um, if we're doing background, is um, I have ancestors who came on the Mayflower. Um, I am a daughter of American Revolution on the other side. 
Um, but truly, being in Hopkinton, um, it's been 30 years since I moved on to a little house, into a little house on Lake Maspinock, which I still love. I'm not there now. Um, then I moved back home to Newton, moved to Weston because I worked in a large uh, Sunday school there, ran a Sunday school program. Moved back to Hopkinton and have been here since 97 again. I have three children who've gone through the schools. My last <coughs> is in high school now. Um, I work in the schools currently. In terms of volunteer positions, I've worked in the schools, I've worked in scouts, both in Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. I, um, right now, I'm chair of Youth Commission, been chair of Cultural Council, so I am for arts, youth, seniors. One of my businesses that I work for um, cared for seniors in nursing homes. So I ask for your vote so that I may continue the wonderfulness of Hopkinton. Um, as it moves into the future, given that there is already growth here. Thank you so much. And Claire Wright. Good evening. I'm Claire Wright, candidate for Board of Selectmen, and a big thank you to the Women's Club for this great opportunity. I'm running for Selectmen because I feel I have the experience, the commitment, and the knowledge needed for this important position. And I love and care about this town. It's easy to say that. We can all talk the talk. But I truly have walked the walk. I've spent the last 30 years working on town boards for the progress and the protection of this beautiful town. From the Design Review Board, Historic District Commission, Master Plan Subcommittee, to 15 years as an elected member of the Planning Board, I have spent hundreds of hours working for the good of Hopkinton. I've even done my turn as dog officer, so I really have seen it all. <laughs> Working on the planning board at a time of tremendous growth has truly been a proving ground for me. I've seen firsthand how town government works. I've gained a solid understanding of the issues facing our town. And I've learned how to listen to people, learn from people, and find solutions. We're at a pivotal time, a time of enormous growth with the impacts not yet felt or seen. Despite all of our positives, there are citizens, both young and old, who are leaving town because they can't afford to stay here. And there is great concern about the direction of our town. How we manage our growth. How we provide services while controlling taxes. Keep our schools strong. Develop our infrastructure and encourage responsible business growth will determine if the Hopkinton of tomorrow remains the Hopkinton of today that we all love. The Board of Selectmen is central to this role. I hope that the knowledge I've gained through town service, the commitment to you that I have demonstrated, will earn your confidence and trust in me to take on this important responsibility as your next Selectman. Mary Jo Lafreniere, candidate for Board of Assessors. Hi, I, I'm not going to speak too long this evening because you have these, we have wonderful contested races here and I don't happen to be this time. I just want to introduce myself to people who might not know me. Uh, I worked in the assessor's office here for 10 years in which I got my mass accreditation. I then went to the work for the State House for another 10 years and then I was the professional assessor in the town of Plainville for 11 years and I have my mass accreditation. I have also been re-accredited three times, which means you have to take courses and get so many credits to get re-accredited, re and you should do that every three years. Um, so I'm, I'm all up to date on my credentials. I have retired from assessing. I have been on the Board of Assessors here for a number of years, and you have an excellent board, by the way. Uh, the other members are, are wonderful. We deal with the senior citizens, with the uh, exemption programs, with the abatement programs. A lot of it is not public record, it's not public knowledge, uh, so you have to have confidence in your, in your assessors. And we also deal with very, very closely with the Department of Revenue and, of course, the professional assessor, John Neese, which was hired uh, recently and is excellent, by the way. Uh, we make a lot of decisions for everybody in town and we like to be as open as, as we can be. Um, I, and I just wanted to say our main goal is fair and equitable assessment. 
for everybody. And whether it's on market value or whether it's, it's done in, there's three different ways of assessing property. But residential property, for the most part, is done by uh, sales and, and market analysis. And uh, we also do the commercial industrial, which there is a lot of in this town, actually. Um, so I would like your vote come Election Day. Thank you very much. And for the Board of Health, Philip Cohen. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Philip Cohen. Uh, and actually, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to introduce myself to not only the Women's Club and also the community. Um, I have been serving as your, uh, one of the members of your Board of Health for the past year. Uh, I moved to Hopkinton three years ago, and about a year ago, um, you guys had a vacated seat here in town on the Board of Health. And Selectman Coutinho asked me to uh, step up and help out and I've been serving ever since. Uh, I am a surgeon. I work here uh, in the area. Um, I uh, clearly know a little bit about uh, health, but oddly enough, the Board of Health is actually not uh, as much you would think about uh, um, all health. There's a little bit of plumbing, a little bit of construction, a little bit of code, and I'm very well familiar with all of that as well, having had my hand slinging a hammer every now and then. So, uh, I hope for your support come Election Day. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here, and I'll yield the floor. And for the Board of Health, Jennifer Flanagan. Hi, so my name's Jen Flanagan, and um, I was recruited for this position. It wasn't something that I, uh, you know, seeked out on my own, um, but I really thank Darlene Hayes for um, asking me to run for this because I've lived in town for 17 years. I have two middle schoolers. Um, I care very much about the town, uh, obviously, I mean, uh, we all do. Um, but also, uh, what's important to me is that our restaurants and our schools and our local towns and parks all are very safe for our children. And so that's something that's really, really important to me, is just making sure that school cafeterias and places like Bill's and places like <laughs> the frozen yogurt place, that they all actually are um, a place that our children can go and not have to worry about their restrooms being clean <laughs> or uh, there being any um, issues with any of the food that they serve. Um, so that's really sort of my my platform here. Um, I also used to work with <coughs> restaurants. I worked with Legal Seafoods and Boston Restaurant Group, and I used to do all their pre-OSHA inspections. So I have a lot of experience with going into restaurants and sort of saying to them, hey, your ice is too close to your glassware, or you don't have uh, the rubber mats where they're supposed to be. So I have done a lot of restaurant inspections, and that actually is something that I think will help me a lot. Um, I think the bottom line is that we are bombarded every day with all of these issues where things are just going wrong in public restaurants and public spaces. And I think that it really, it's our responsibility to make sure that that doesn't take place in our town. Um, I promise to work really closely with Kelly Carp on what's going on at Lake Maspinock. Um, so that when we are dealing with the weed issue, we are also making it safe for our children to swim. Um, I think that's huge. And also the other thing is um, uh, working with the DPW on all of the standing water and um, <coughs> the, the catch basins in town because I think that that's also super important because people just don't even realize the mosquito issue that we're dealing with. <coughs> so anyways, I talk too much like I always do. Thank you. <laughs> And for the Board of Library Trustees, Michael McNamara. All right, thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike McNamara, and I'm running for re-election. So I've been fortunate. I've been on the trustees from the very beginning, so it's been five years now. But it was it's been kind of cool because it was when the planning had you know, started for the new new library. So the reason why I'm running for re-election is just to, just to see it through. So hopefully in this three-year term, the library, knock on wood, will be done. And it'll be kind of cool because how, how often do you get to be, think about it, it probably won't be a new library here in town for another 100 years. So it's, it's kind of a cool thing to see it from the very beginning all the way to the very end. So, and it will probably be my last time running. But like a lot of folks here, I'm sure I, I love the library. And if you guys go into the library, you notice there's a, there's a book on the counter for a DVDs. And you can take them out like the latest and greatest. You'll see my name on almost every one. But, but I, I encourage you guys to do it. It's great. Just put your name down and the DVDs show up at the library and then you can 
you can get it. So I think I'm running unopposed, so I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time, but thank you. And for Commissioner of Trust Fund, Maureen Bumiller. Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Maureen Bumiller, and thank you to HCAM and the Women's Club for holding this forum. I am running for the position of Commissioner of Trust Funds, and this will be a re-election for me for another three-year term. I've been doing the job for six years now, and the commission um, manages five trust funds that were left to the town for very specific purposes, and we decide if requests for the funds are justified and a good use of the funds. And we have aid from the finance director from the town and a, um, the investment house to do that. Um, I am an employee of the town of Hopkinton as a substitute teacher, and I worked in health care for 30 years before that. So I am asking for your vote in May. <coughs> Thank you. First, I would like to thank Nancy Clock, the Women's Club, and HCAM for hosting this forum. Uh, I am Michael Hayes. I am candidate for the constable. Uh, I've lived in Hopkinton for over 20 years. I have uh, been involved in the community through my kids' school and scouts. And now that they are older, I would like to serve the community more. And I would appreciate your vote come Monday, May 16th. Thank you. And for Constable Michael Humina. Hello once again. <clears throat> um, as a uh, current constable in the town of Hopkinton, um, I was elected three years ago. And the reason I wanted to become a Hopkinton constable was because in Hopkinton and anywhere else in the state where you're an elected constable, you have the right and the privilege to attend whatever meetings you need to attend or you feel you need to attend, whether they be public, private, secret, whatever. And that is very important, I feel, uh, because if you uh, feel that there's something going on in the town that you really don't understand or you think might be bad for the town, uh, you can get into those kind of meetings. Now, luckily, we don't have those kind of meetings in Hopkinton very often. Um, so it's been kind of a slow term for me. But I also feel it's important that uh, as a selectman in the town that I have that same right, uh, which is guaranteed under the Massachusetts Constitution, to attend whatever meetings I deem necessary to be able to understand what's going on and if there's a problem, I want to know about it. And I think that uh, it may even be covered for constables as well. I'm not exactly sure, but I feel it's important uh, to be able to have that added to your Office of Selectmen. And I would like your vote again to be reelected as Constable Hopkinton, again, nonpartisan, because I am unenrolled and will remain that way. I don't believe party politics has any role in, in uh, politics in Hopkinton. I am a Hopkintonian. I've been here a long time. I've seen a lot of things go on. And I'm hoping that you will trust and respect my uh, thoughts and judgments and my um, decisions that I make, especially when I stand up in the town meeting and go off about something that I don't think is uh, something that is good for this town. And I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you very much. And for the Hopkinton Housing Authority, Nancy Calais. Hi, Nancy Calais. I'm running for the board on the Hopkinton Housing Authority. Um, I've been on the board for a number of years, and it's, it's really a pleasure to serve on this board because the residents are such nice people. I can see we have a few in the audience today. Um, the, the Hopkinton Housing Authority is fiscally sound. It's been in the black for many years. I've never seen it in the red. Um, we have a very active tenant association. Um, it's, just a, it's just a great board to be on, and I'd like to continue with that. Um, recently, we've had a change of director. Um, Linda Donahue, who was with us for many, many years, retired. We have a new director, and it's also a new program where we're, we are um, sharing a director with Westboro, Westboro Housing Authority. Um, so it's, I think it's going to, so far it's working out really well. Um, we've had some difficult waters to navigate recently, but um, it's, it's gone, we've, we've gotten through it, and um, I'd like to continue with the board. Thank you. For the Parks and Recreation Commission, Eric Sonnet. Good evening. My name's Eric Sonnet, and I'm running for re-election to the Parks and Recreation Commission. It's 
been a wild three years, and the accomplishments of Parks and Rec have become very visible. For example, Sandy Beach has been refurbished, new restrooms, storage area, uh, handicapped access to the beach via a beautiful trail, new playground. The boat ramp has been repaired and there will actually be a boat dock installed this summer so you don't have to get out of the water after you launch your boat. The town common has been upgraded. Historical restoration of the Kaplan Fountain. The fountain was over almost 100 years old. We took the opportunity to have it refurbished historically to its original condition. State-of-the-art interior to make the water flow and to sustain it. We expect another 100 years out of the fountain in its current configuration. It's actually become the focal point of the town common. The uh, Fruit Street Fields. We spent, I can't begin to tell you how much pain over the years to have those, those fields built. At the time, I was chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and we did everything in the world to assist Parks and Rec at that time to have the kind of fields and the state-of-the-art uh, situation that we have today. We are currently upgrading that area of Fruit Street, the fields, by adding new facilities. There'll be facilities for restrooms, no more porta pots There will be a facility, or in the facility, there'll be a concession stand. There will be storage. There will be storm safety. And I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could go on and on, but thank you so much. And for the Parks and Recreation Commission, Kelly Carp. Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> I'm so pleased to be here tonight. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the Hopkinton Women's Club and HCAM for hosting tonight's event. Uh, but secondly, I'd also like to thank all of the people on the panel with me tonight for their willingness to contribute their time and expertise to governing our town. Uh, my name is Kelly Carp, and I am running for a seat on the Park and Recre Recreation Commission. I have lived in Hopkinton for 11 years with my husband, Brian, and two daughters, Elizabeth and Emily, who are 15 and 13. <clears throat> Simply stated, I love Hopkinton. Uh, for me, this is not a political endeavor, but rather an opportunity to volunteer and give back to the community I love so much. Both of my girls have participated in the Parks and Rec summer camp and youth soccer programs. Uh, for the last several years, I have played in the Women's Softball League, and last fall, I worked closely with the Park and Recreation Department to develop and launch the first Women's Flag Football League in Hopkinton. It was a very successful collaborative uh, effort. With the assistance of uh, the Park and Rec Department, we received national sponsorship from NFL Flag Football, and we were able to create four teams with approximately 40 participants. I realized then that there was an ongoing demand for high quality athletic programs for adults as well as for our children. I would love to have the opportunity to bring more of these programs to our community. Throughout my professional career, I've been recognized as a results-driven dynamic leader. I have a very strong operational background, which includes project management, strategic planning, financial administration, process improvement, and policy development. I understand how important it is to listen objectively and con consider all points of view and deliver a solution that is best for the overall community. I believe I have what it takes to represent the growing needs of our town and respectfully ask for your vote on May 16th. For the Planning Board, David Paul. Hello, everyone. My name is Dave Paul. Um, I'm running for the Planning Board uh, unopposed, so I just want to get out here so people can um, share my, uh, listen to my views. Um, my background, I have an IT background. I've worked for uh, both Staples and TGX corporations. Um, for a, a long time. Those are two big companies with world headquarters in Metro West. Um, I grew up in Connecticut. Um, then spent half my life in Connecticut, half my life in Hopkinton. So um, I really feel like Hopkinton is home. I have uh, my two oldest daughters went completely through the school system, all 12 grades. Um, and I have a third daughter who will have done the same in about three years. Um, during that time, Especially recently, 
I've thought a lot about the, the planning board. I've gone to a lot of meetings, attended meetings with um, Ken Weissmental and his, his team. Um, they, do a, they do a great job, and I'm really looking forward to working with them. Um, I just noted some topics here. Four of them I have listed. Hopefully I can get through them pretty quickly, one minute. Um, so the first one is sidewalks and curbs, and um, I, I really enjoy sidewalks and curbs, believe it or not. But um, there, there's two reasons. One is they, they make the town look really nice, and um, that's something we all, we all strive for, having a nice looking town and functioning town, working well. But more importantly for safety, especially these days with everyone texting and not fully concentrating on driving. Um, so that's one of the things I'm looking forward to working with the planning board. Um, and as well as um, there's been a bunch of new houses, like 40 developments in the last 25 years and six new public buildings in the last 25 years. Um, you can see them on Wikipedia. I actually put them out there, so <laughs> if you want to see them there. But, um, and then um, the bu zoning bylaws, that's the behind the scenes kind of stuff. And I just want to thank everyone and uh, please vote for me and don't write your own name in. So thank you. <laughs> and candidate for the school committee, Nancy Richards Cavanaugh. Hi, I'm Nancy Richards Cavanaugh and I am running for school committee. I want to start by thanking the Women's Club and HCAMP for hosting this and giving us an opportunity to answer your questions and introduce ourselves for who we are. I am new to uh, running for elected town office, but I'm not new to town. I've been here for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm not new to my commitment to the schools either. I have four kids. Uh, my youngest is in kindergarten, and believe it or not, my oldest is going to graduate in a little over a month. And then I have two in the middle, and I have volunteered uh, in all of the schools in different capacities with the PTA, room parent, different events. I volunteered on committees for different issues that have come up to help resolve them. I have served on school council. I have worked with Educate Hopkinton, now EHOP. And what really brought my passion to the school committee was I've been following the school committee as a reporter for the Hopkinton Independent for, I've lost track for how many years, but say four superintendents and over a dozen principals ago I, I started. Uh, and I've really been drawn into some of the pressing issues for our schools, uh, in particular the growth that we've experienced. Hopkinton, as I think probably most of us know, has been one of the fastest growing towns in the state. And we have a number of new developments coming online that will impact our schools as well. I want to be there to help move the process through, help bring the new school online. I'd like to improve uh, transparency and communication with the school committee and with the community and between the boards to see people working a little more collaboratively. We have great, great volunteers that work for the town. And I'd like to see people work together as much as we possibly can. I also see I am running short on time, so I am going to bow down, to cede my seat to the next person. But I would appreciate uh, your support at the election in May. Thank you. And for town clerk. Connor Deegan. Hi, everyone. Actually, I'm glad to see you have such a great turnout tonight. I really wanted to thank the Women's Club for hosting these events because it's extremely important to educate the people of Hopkinton on how we need to vote on come election day so that we have all of the facts. One of the things that I want to be able to do running for town clerk is I want to be able to educate younger voters in our town so that they can become more involved in our political system. We have a population in this country alone that only a third of people still vote in major national elections. I'd like to be able to see a chance that I can go into the schools and educate people in the high school that are going to be going into the voting population so that they can then hopefully come back and give to this town. I decided to come back and give to this town after I came back from college and I started working in the town clerk's office and in doing so I learned a great deal about everything that go went on in the town clerk's office. Some things I had no idea the complexities of what occurred in there and with my love of history and the history of this town maintaining the records and being the one who oversees the election process is something that makes me very passionate. And I would really hope that I have your vote on election day 
so that I can continue my career in civil service to this town. Thank you very much. And for town clerk, Henry Kanicki. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you for the Women's Club for this opportunity. I'm Henry Kanicki, and I'm running for town clerk. I'm running in full support of changing the town clerk's position to an appointed one rather than an elected position. Town clerk is an important position that requires someone familiar with how the town government works and who is able to work with both appointed and elected members of the town. Our family moved here in 1982. I soon became involved with town government, served on several boards, appropriations, board of appeals, and for the last several years, the community preservation committee. I'm currently chairman of that committee. My intent has always been what is best for Hopkinton. While on the CPC, I have been a strong advocate of supporting programs that benefited both the community and gave us the most for our money. We worked together with the Hopkinton Soccer League and Parks and Recreation to provide funding that was a key factor in developing the soccer fields on Fruit Street and the new concession stands and shelter that are being built to support the fields. We provided funds to assist Parks and Recs for the renovation of Sandy Beach and the Town Fountain. And more important, and one of my favorite things that we've done, is we work with the Hopkinton Center of the Arts to renovate a historic barn and turn it into a vibrant art center. I look to continue my work with the town of Hopkinton as town clerk with the intent of making the transition to an appointed position as clean as possible. I sincerely ask for your vote. Thank you. And for town moderator, Bruce Carlin. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you to HCAM and to the uh, Women's Club. I'm Bruce Carlin, and I'm running for uh, town moderator. I love town meeting. It is pure democracy with no barriers between you, the citizen, and legislative decisions. Town meeting members are the legislature. You deliberate and vote. I want to facilitate this form of governance for as long as feasible. While we hope that our legislators are informed, there is a lot to digest. As the town grows, there is ever more to scrutinize. Volunteers on our many town committees summarize the facts for town meeting to streamline our process. Still, there are questions and deliberations can sometimes seem tedious. The highly engaged citizen may find naive questions a waste of time but it is part of the process of engaging new members. I want to keep the meeting fresh and moving, but I want novices to contribute and get engaged. I want to keep the meeting, uh, uh, I think I, I balance these forces. I'm proud to be a member of this panel. The, uh, all of us here share a bond. We commit to work for the town. I count my esteemed opponent as a friend which I am sure will continue after the election. We each feel that we can run town meeting better. I know that my 12 years on the Appropriations Committee, one as vice chair and two as chair, and my 20 years as town moderator give me a clear understanding of how to run town meeting. We average about 10 minutes an article. I try to provide a light touch when levity is needed, but strive to run a tight meeting. I ask for your vote. Thank you. And for town moderator, Thomas Garabedian. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, H. Cam and the Women's Club for sponsoring this evening. <clears throat> By way of introduction, my wife and I have been in Hopkinton since 1988, and we've been involved in town government and civic affairs from the start. I've served on the school committee for six years, on the zoning, zoning board of appeals for 15 years, and was a commissioner of trust funds, uh, principally for the, for the library trust fund, for nine years. My wife, Dora, helped to start the townwide PTA and the Cultural Arts Alliance. Uh, I've, I'm retired at this point. I've spent 38 years as a consulting actuary, managing large projects and conducting uh, large meetings. I've also served as an executive director of, a, of an NGO, a non-governmental organization focused on environmental issues. As Bruce mentioned, town meeting is the ultimate exercise of democracy in Hopkinton. A town meeting which is run efficiently keeps our townspeople engaged in the process and informed about the important issues in front of the town. A town meeting which meanders through articles 
prolongs the evening, leads to multi-night sessions, causes people to lose focus and interest, and ultimately frustrates their participation. It is the moderator's responsibility, along with the selectmen and town volunteers, the town manager and other town employees, to ensure that that doesn't happen. I commit to be knowledgeable about the issues that are before the town and to help lead the meeting in a way that will lead to an effective result. I ask for your support at the May town election on the 16th. Thank you. Let us now give a round of applause for all the candidates. It is now time for the second portion of our program, the question and answer segment. This is the public's opportunity to ask questions of the candidates. For the members of the studio audience who desire to ask a question, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address, and your question. If you prefer to submit a written question for me to ask, note cards are available on the back table. Please include your name and address. In addition, viewers at home can question the candidates by dialing the direct call line number shown on your screen or by sending an email to live at hcam.tv. Please remember that if new people are waiting to ask a question, I will enforce a limit of one question per person. Responses from candidates must be kept to a maximum of two minutes. If a question is posed to a specific candidate, I will offer response time to all other candidates for that office as well. The privilege of being the first person in a group to answer will begin alphabetically and will rotate as subsequent questions are asked. And now we are ready for the first question. Please state your name and address and what person or group of candidates your question is directed to. Ken Weissmantle, 145 Ash Street. This question is for the candidates for town clerk. This position is the only position that is paid in Hopkinton as an elected official, and it pays $65,630. Or $65, Please uh, allow me to interview you for the job that pays quite a bit of money by stating your uh, past experience, your life experiences, whatever that makes you the best candidate for town clerk. And we will first hear from Connor Deegan. Thank you, Ken, for that wonderful question. Uh, I think that it really comes down to, do you want the bang for your buck? You're going to be giving a lot of money to this position and hope that what you're doing is giving money to someone who can competently perform the duties of the town clerk. In doing so, you're also hoping that they're going to be able to dedicate all of their time to being your town clerk. It's one of the benefits that you get of having uh, an elected clerk that is paid at the rate that is quite decently high. You avoid a clerk going to other locations for work, so that then all of their focus is on the townspeople and how they can help them. It might be that they'll help them in their spare time. They're not going to be going anywhere else because they have enough money to continue living in this town. And I think that it's usually a reasonable sum to ask for someone to dedicate all their time, even their off hours, to helping the people of Hopkinton. And I really increase the rest of my time. Thank you. Good question. Uh, we moved, when I moved to town, basically I was uh, founder of a computer graphics firm. And over the last mm, 30 years, I basically have uh, been vice president of sales for a major imaging company. I uh, ran the Pacific Rim for uh, eSystems, which was a $3 billion company. I basically traveled internationally continually. Uh, and, uh, and I basically ran a high-end security company with offices here in, in Italy. So I'm familiar with working with, with a lot of technology, working closely with, with people in, in various positions. And the big thing is I'm, I'm used to working with both of the appointed and elected members of the town government. This is something that really interests me, and I want to make sure that the, the transition from an elected position over the next year, maybe two years, is one that's done properly. 
I really ask you for your vote. Thank you. And we have a call-in question from an at-home viewer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can you hear us? How about if we take the question from here? And we'll, they still on the line? Say go ahead again. Go ahead. Okay. This is a question for the candidates running for a constable. Um, Can you speak up, please? The question is, um, what exactly does the constable do? All right. And could you tell us who you are, please? Um, I'm Ethan Rubish. Could you give us your name, please? Ethan Ritterbush. All right. Thank you, Ethan. So that's a question for the constable, and they want to know exactly what the constable does. So Michael Hayes will speak first, and then Michael Yumna. Um, a constable will give out civil warrants. Um, he mostly works with the court systems and delivers the warrants. Um, felony warrants go through the police department. The civil warrants will go through the constable. Um, the answer to that question is basically what he gave you. Uh, it's, it's also involved with the ability to go to, like I said before, any meeting in the town that takes place within town government or within the town that involves any of the committees or subcommittees or whatever. The constable has the right to go to those uh, if they feel it's necessary and also, as he said, to post warrants for the town. You can also work for the sheriff's department and uh, serve criminal warrants if you desire, uh, something that I have not done. But uh, it gives you the right to keep your, your uh, finger on the pulse of what's going on in the town. Uh, thank you. All right. And if you'll state your name and address and question. I'm Julie Hayes, uh, One Third Road, and my question is for the town clerk candidates. Um, if this um, goes, it's on the town warrant to either become, stay elected, become appointed, if it Regardless of what, either way, are both of you in this for the long haul? If it doesn't become appointed, are you staying on board? Or are you going to transition out? Um, is this something that you look as a career move? First, we'll hear from Henry Kinnick. Uh, <clears throat> I look at this as basically a, a three-year, it's a three-year elected position. If it does not go through and, and on the warrant and, and fails, I will, I will basically complete the whole three-year term. Uh, but I really believe this is something the town should should correct. It was, should have been taken care of before, but now this is an opportunity to convert it to a really an appointed position where the where the person can be vetted professionally, so they we have a good continuing operation in that in that town clerk's office. So really 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 an important position, and it has to be done correctly. Thank you. And Connor Deegan. Well, just to start out with the answer to the question, yes, absolutely yes. I plan on, if it become, stays an elected position, i doing this because I want to dedicate myself to this town. I don't, I'm not doing it as a placeholder just in case. Right now I want to dedicate myself to the town, and if, if this goes to appointed, I plan on applying to be the appointed clerk. I want to do this for the town. I think it's an important role. I believe that I have received much of the training. No one can be fully prepared for this position. All you can do is get as close as you can, and then a lot of it's learning on the job. So I think that I'm prepared to do this, and I want to be able to do this for the long term for the benefit of this town. Thank you. All right, we have another call in. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Can you tell us your name and your question, please? This is Frank Dorso, 173 Saddle Hill Road. And not if you can hear me. We can hear you. Oh, I, can, I can hear you. Great. My question is for the Board of Selectmen candidates. Uh, first, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see so many candidates running. Uh, but my question is, how would you suggest we handle the situation with the gas company uh, as it's been dis um, discussed in the news? Uh, well, how would you handle it or suggest we handle it as a town? 
All right. We'll hear from Brendan Tedstone first, and then Michael Yumina. And the question was, how would you handle the situation with the gas company that's been in the news? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not too versed in what's going on with that. I've read about it in the newspaper, and I've read about it on uh, on Hop News and, and some of the other local sites. Um, so. I guess how I would handle it is I would read up on it, become very educated, and, and, uh, and try to figure out what exactly is going on with it as far as uh, its impact on the legacy farms and, uh, and the rest of the town, and, uh, and move from there. All right. Michael Yumina. Okay. <coughs> uh, I, too, have not been completely following what's going on with the gas company. However, the gas company is a public utility, and their job is to serve us. Lord knows we pay them enough. And uh, if uh, there's anything I can do that will help the citizens of the town with any type of, uh, you know, problems with the gas company, I will do it. And I'll let you know exactly what's going on. I promise that I will always let you know uh, what's on my mind. And people say I wear my heart on my sleeve because when something's going on, I want everybody else to know about it. Well, most of the time. but. Uh, that's the position I will take. I am not real happy with the public utilities in the state of Massachusetts or how they're handled. And I think that um, when they turned down the wind farms and when they uh, decided to put a cap on solar energy, uh, that that was a really bad thing for Hopkinton. I understand Hopkinton has now uh, reached its cap on solar energy. And my position would be to work really hard with our state legislators to try to get them to lift that cap and or abolish it so that uh, we have better control of emissions from gas-fired power plants and uh, more of that stuff can come naturally from the sun because I'm also a green candidate. I started off my college career as a pre-med and, and spent time uh, studying biology. So you could say that I am at heart a, uh, a conservative when it I'm not a conservative, a progressive when it comes to being green. And that, I promise you, I will continue to be. Thank you very much. And Margie Wigan. Thank you. Um, so I decided to major in English in college, UMass, which I loved. And my son is there now. Um, because I knew that whatever job I had, I would be able to read the training manual, understand what I was to do, and then proceed with whatever job it is. So anything that's presented to the Board of Selectmen, I assume we would be given a packet of information, we would be educated, we would be informed, we could ask questions of Norman Kamalo, we could call the gas company. So in this particular case, um, I would assume that when this comes before the town, and if it is before the town, which I'm not aware of the full details, that we would have all the information from the legal standpoint, from the health standpoint, from um, any kind of natural resource impact that would happen. And given all of that information as a Board of Selectmen um, person, I would then be able to make a, an informed and intelligent decision, which I am not right now because I don't have all that material in front of me and I wouldn't want to just make something up. That's not what I do. Thank and you. Claire Wright. I believe that the town right now is handling the questions surrounding the Hopkinton LNG plant in exactly the right manner. The Hopkinton LNG plant has been there for about 50 years. It continues to meet the federal standards for such facilities. Um, there has really been very little change in the facility or the circumstances surrounding it, except that there has been over the years more growth in that area. Um, it's absolutely right that we should be asking questions. Uh, the facility is no secret. It's very hard to hide three enormous blue tanks on the top of a hill. Uh, for anyone who thinks it's a secret, it's just that maybe they've never been down Wilson Street. But um, it's right as a host community that we ask questions as development continues, particularly in that area and throughout town. What we've been finding so far um, is that um, the, the questions that are being asked and the reports that have been commissioned by the town, by the developer, by peer review are giving us an analysis of the situation, 
the risks and the realities of what exists. And it's always good to get information. I also believe that it's always good to be discreet and circumspect as a town official until all information is received. But at the same time, transparency and openness is what we always want in our town and in our officials. So um, I believe the town is handling the situation absolutely correctly and we can be confident that the right answers are available to all our citizens on the LNG plant. We have another question. You'll state your name and address. John Catino, David Joseph Road. Uh, first, I want to thank all the candidates for stepping up. This is amazing. When I walked in and saw all these candidates running for office, it's, it's just fabulous. Uh, I've actually got a question for the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Board of Selectmen candidates, sorry. I've heard all of you say that um, how much you love Hopkinton and how each of you want to control growth. To keep Hopkinton what it is and maybe bring it back to what it was. However, the town must have growth in order to add dollars to the coffers. Looking at the projected budgets going into 2000, uh, 2018, 19, and 20, um, we're going to need additional revenue to pay for our new school DPW and all the purchases we've done in the last couple of years without large tax increases. I'd like to know how each of you May help, may help influence policy to ensure control growth, yet to control tax increases. All right, we'll hear from Michael Humana first. Okay, <clears throat> one thing about Hopkinton that I have noticed over my long, long length of time living here is that everybody who comes to Hopkinton seems to want to be the last one to be in the town and they don't seem to want to let anybody else in. But I think the cat's out of the bag now because we have this huge development that was put in that uh, was um, allowed under law. It was legal, and they have a right to do it with, you know, right to private property to do what they wish. However, in order to maintain the increased tax burden that goes along with having many more residents and many more children in the schools, the only way we're going to make the tax burden stay the same or possibly diminish a bit in this town is to get a little bit more commercial development to come to Hopkinton. It's a painful thing. Hopkinton has always wanted to be a bedroom community. They have not wanted to have uh, new people or new businesses. They want to keep it small. <clears throat> they want to keep it private. But you cannot do that. Money does not grow on trees. It comes from taxpayers. And if you don't want to raise the taxes on the people who live in the town, you need to have more business come to the town. And we have got to establish a way for that to happen in Hopkinton so that they will pay taxes that will not involve the schools and other parts of the town that cost a lot of money to the taxpayers. And that's, that's about the only thing that we can do that I can see that will help the town of Hopkinton. So um, one last thing about the the uh, gas tanks, it jogged my memory after I sat down, was that those gas tanks, and I got up in town meeting and spoke about it, have a one mile kill zone around them. If one of those tanks goes off, all of the tanks go off. It has the same destructive power as the bombs they dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the Second World War. And not a lot of people know about that. I stood up and said it in town meeting, and people still got up and voted to put more homes there. I will talk more about this, thank you. And Margie Wigan. I think I live near those tanks, but I'm not going to think about that right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I actually agree with Mr. Yumina. I, obviously, we need to bring in revenue positive uh, businesses. I, one of my bullet points is thoughtful planned growth, and I believe that's been happening, but I want to make sure that it continues. So if we were to bring in a hotel, for example, which I understand from um, the meeting the other night would have a 7% tax um, increase or uh, benefit to the town. If we were to bring that hotel in, I would want to carefully think about where best to put that hotel regarding proximity to schools um, and neighborhoods, et cetera. So obviously, we need to increase the tax revenue. So I would want to carefully look at all possibilities to make sure that we were not just 
putting a Band-Aid on a, on a situation that would cause us to regret it later. Um, so I would want to carefully look at options. I would want options to be presented to the board and then be able to choose from among those and carefully research rather than have a knee-jerk reaction and throw something very quickly um, into a situation that might cause more of a problem. Thank you. Claire Wright. Well, yes, we certainly do need to encourage business growth in Hoppington, but how do you do that? Um, for one thing, we need to make sure that we keep our tax structure such that it encourages businesses by keeping the single rate tra tax structure. We also need to look at providing infrastructure where, which would attract businesses if there is need for additional sewer infrastructure resources further down the line, water resources, traffic management, roadways. These are all aspects that businesses look for. They also look for a good workforce within their community and we certainly have that in Hopkinton. Um, we also, and I would, I'm putting on my planning board hat now, I would encourage everyone to vote for the planning board articles that are on the warrant this year. We've made several um, attempts to change the Hotel Overlay District and um, Elmwood uh, Park District that would make it more attractive, give us more success in attracting some businesses to those areas where we have not so far. Um, I would also say, and people don't want to hear this, but we have spent an awful lot of money in recent years. And very soon, particularly at last year's town meeting, and they're all for things that we need, we are going to have to pay the piper. Um, I heard a selectman last night say we can't have it all, and this is going to be true. In the coming years, particularly in 2018, there is going to be a tax bump. We're going to have to tighten our belts. We're going to have to look at how we spend our money and make some hard decisions about what we want and when we can have it. And that is the absolute truth that your selectmen need to realize and share with the, with the voters. And Brenda Testa. Well, it's easy going last. Um, <laughs> everything, they, every, all the good points they said, I agree with. Um, so, one of the things is to keep track of the, uh, the Legacy Farms host agreement where when we were negotiating, I know when the town was negotiating with, with Western Nurseries to buy it, there was talk that, that you know, there was no way that when they did this development that it wasn't going to be tax positive for the town. So if we can keep their feet to the fire and make sure that whatever Legacy builds, if they decide they're going to build some commercial space or, or housing or whatever, everything needs to be tax positive to cover all the infrastructure. Now that's not, you know, you're gonna make money on the taxes for the houses and things like that, but you got police, you got fire, you got uh, teachers, you got schools, you've got water, sewer, everything. And it's very important to kind of keep a close eye on that, um, that uh, host agreement and make sure that we, we hold them to that so we do remain tax positive so it doesn't become much of a burden on the town. I have a few questions that were emailed. I'm going to ask one, and then I'm hoping someone else from the audience will come up to the microphone. This question is for the candidates for the Parks and Recreation Commission, and it concerns trees on the common. Um, the question is, it's it sent in by Beth. In 2010, the Parks and Rec paid Weston and Sampson to study the landscaping on the common. As a result, more than 20 diseased or dying shade trees were cut down. The report stated that four shade trees should be planted every year so that the common continued to be a green oasis downtown. Since 2013, no trees have been planted. The Holman Fund contains money to do the planting. Will you follow the suggestion of the report and plant four, have four shade trees each year planted on the common? Kelly Carp. Um, I'm not very familiar with uh, with that particular um, um, situation, but I, I can tell you that if I was elected to the commission, um, I would certainly look into it. I would certainly uh, investigate what our commitment was. Um, I would want to understand if there was a commitment, why we didn't um, follow it, and um, I would implement it if that was what needed to be done or if that's what we had agreed to do. Um, that would be my, my answer. And Eric Sonnet. 
first of all, there was no commitment. There was a study that made a recommendation. The Parks and Rec Commission gets direct feedback from our citizens. Overwhelmingly, our citizens have said the common has never looked better. We do have a plan to plant some trees, not for a year, not under any formula. We will continue to maintain the ambient ambience of the common and allow that people can uh, participate in concerts and things like that. Unfortunately, many people want a forest there so that many of the activities can't happen. That's not the direction of the current Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And there's another question. Please state your name and address. Yes, Ron Clark, 8 School Street. May be a trouble at home for asking this question, but uh, oh. anyway, I have a question for the uh, Board of Selectmen candidates, and it's a two-part question. And I would be interested in your view as to what is the role of the Board of Selectmen members and what is the role of the town manager? And the second part of the question is about leadership. Who should provide leadership on what issues as far as the Board of Selectmen versus the town manager? Thank you. All right, Thank you. Margie Wigan. Um, that is one of the things I looked at carefully when I read the t uh, charter, the charter, because looking at the Board of Selectmen meeting, I'm not always sure. Um, I, as I read it, the town manager is responsible for managing town hall employees and for putting into um, practice or putting, uh, getting things started that the Board of Selectmen vote on. My understanding is that the Board of Selectmen vote on policy or create policy and that they bring their various multi-talented um, perspectives to bear in deciding on those kinds of questions. Um, I actually love watching Board of Selectmen meetings. If I don't go personally, I watch from home. Um, and I'm always very interested to see the different points of view and how they all come together to make um, not the collage that brings the answer, but they all have different points to bear. Uh, uh, and I think it's a very wonderful process, which is why I would like to be a part of that. Um, I, what I watch in terms of leadership, I see that Norman Kamalo is an incredibly intelligent, talented person. Um, I'm not always sure what he thinks. I'm not always sure he completely answers the question. So one of the things that I would like to do as a selectman is to continue to ask the question until I get an answer that I can understand and therefore people watching the meeting can understand. Um, so what I hope to do is be able to represent the people at home and the people in the town who aren't present to ask the questions of the town manager so that we will know what the answer is. Thank you. Claire Wright. Thank you. Well, certainly the Board of Selectmen has some sort of mundane uh, responsibilities of issuing licenses, liquor permits, parade permits. Uh, they set the town warrant, they give overall approval to the town budget, they make appointments to town boards and committees, um, but they are also responsible for setting the general policy and strategic goals and direction of the town, as well as seeing that the town boards work harmoniously together towards the tr strategic goals that have been set by the board. Um, I know that the town manager has more direct uh, hands-on uh, activity with the finance director in and the department heads in establishing the details of the budget, although this is overseen by, by the uh, board of selectmen. But um, my understanding, there will be a learning curve. I don't disagree with that. Um, but my understanding a few years back before we had a town manager was that almost all the town operations were handled through the Board of Selectmen and we understood that as the town grew we it was be it was becoming too large a job for a volunteer board and we needed a higher level of professionalism that the town manager could bring to making efficient 
day-to-day -day operations. Um, I do believe that in the final analysis, the policy, the directions, and the goals for the town still reside with the Board of Selectmen. And I do agree, watching Selectmen's meetings, it is sometimes very hard to follow, and I would like, as Ms. Wigan does, to make sure that for viewers at home and the voters, we have a clear understanding of what is happening in those meetings. Brendan, Ted Stone. Well, I did the same thing when I, uh, when I became interested in, in running for selectman. Uh, one of the first things I did was I printed the charter, and I read it, and I read it, and I read it a third time. Then I highlighted it, then I read what I highlight, and then I read it again. So it's, I think it's very important to, to know that inevitably Norman reports to the selectman. So, there, you know, there, there, to me, there's no gray area there. You report to me. Go ahead, make your suggestions. We'll take it. The five of us will talk it over. We'll make a decision. Um, I'm not a bureaucrat. I'm not. I'm, I'm very, very straightforward. I'm very direct. I want the, the facts. I'll give you the facts. And if I hurt your feelings with the truth, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings with the truth, Norman, or whomever is the town manager or fire chief, police chief, whatever it is. But I'm very honest, very direct, and I think that moving forward to keep the town as great as it is, you need someone like that. And Michael Yumina. Okay. Um, I had the, the uh, really great um, opportunity to meet Mr. Kamalo during one of the town meetings. And I have always been impressed by that man, how intelligent he is, how honest he is. And I really feel he was a gift to Hopkinton. Uh, he's a person that I trust and respect. And as far as leadership roles go, um, it's as if you had any job yourself. When you have a problem, who do you go to? You go to your boss. And the Board of Selectmen is obviously the, peop the boss or the, the person's in charge. And if you have a problem, you ask them, they give you guidance, and you go. And I believe that that's what Mr. Kamalo has done. I really do feel that he's done a good job at it. I think that uh, uh, we need him here. And I would like to see him around for many more years. I hope that he grows old here and retires from here at some point, um, just so that the town will have his steadying influence with us. And so uh, as far as um, providing leadership, um, I hope that the selectmen never become uh, political in their leadership of Mr. Kamalo. Uh, that's one thing that I promise you I will not do, because I'm not a party politician, never have been, and I, well, maybe when I was younger and I was foolish. Um, but as far as it runs today, uh, I do honestly feel that that office of selectmen should be apolitical and that when we deal with the people who work for the town and are responsible for the management, uh, I think Mr. Kamal has done an excellent job. I will laud that guy and sing his praises for the entire time that he works in the town. And I'll, uh, that's it, I'll leave you uh, the rest of my time. Yeah. Um, I have another question that was emailed in, but it is for the Board of Selectmen candidates. I would encourage people from the audience or at home to possibly come up with a question for some of the other candidates who haven't had a chance to answer anything yet. So this is for the Board of Selectmen candidates, and yes, um, Claire Wright will answer first. It's from Will, and the question is, single stream recycling has been brought up at Board of Selectmen meetings previously and ended with no action taken. Studies showed a cost savings for the town, increased recycling participation, and other benefits. Do you feel the town should reconsider a single stream implementation? Well, I think I understand single stream is a, a recycling method where instead of having, having to separate things out, you can kind of throw it all in together and it gets separated out during the, during the processing. Um, on its face, if this is a cost savings to the town, it would certainly look to be something that we should consider carefully. Um, we are looking to cut costs. However, I don't know, I have not followed this discussion, so I don't know what the reasons are that this has not been pursued. Um, in almost everything, there's a backstory. There's more than meets the eye. So I would just say on the surface, if there's a cost savings, we should be diligent in looking at it. But I would not make a yes or no because I would need to know what 
the decision points have been in this question. Brendan, Ted Stone. Uh, same thing as uh, building on what Claire said. Uh, I don't know much about it. I haven't followed it. Um, but common sense says if we're bringing our recycling out every two weeks and we're putting it separated in four different barrels and they come and grab it and it costs us a buck or we can take it all out in one and it's going to cost us 75 cents, it's a no-brainer. So I don't know too much about it, but based on what's, uh, what's brought up, if, if single stream recycling is going to save us money, I don't know why we wouldn't do it. Yes. Michael Yumina. Um, as far as single string recycling goes, uh, you must have noticed in, if you watch TV and news once in a while, or if you watch uh, most anything that's on TV, you'll come across uh, some of these recycling programs that you see. And they talk about how automation for recycling has been progressing in leaps and bounds. And there are many companies around the world who uh, are really, really getting into it. They're taking piles of just, un just unseparated stuff. The machinery that they have now with all the different types of sensors on it is able to do that mostly by machine. And that's where you're going to get your cost savings from if you don't have to have people involved. It's the coming thing. We on this earth at seven billion uh, kind of have a responsibility to try to recycle and save the planet or our great grandchildren are further down the line are going to have a really tough time. And so if we can get into this single string uh, and use automation and reduce the price, then I think we ought to uh, try to do it. I also think that uh, there may be a possibility that some of that money that is uh, made up in savings uh, to us might uh, actually get a commission from the sale of that, those materials back to the town as well. So it's not just that the town will pay less, we may make, even make a little money on it. I think it's a good idea. So um, what else? I also wanted to mention that uh, something that disturbed me a lot was this liquor license for the art uh, center here in town. And I am against that personally because it's next to the school and I don't think it sets a good example for our children at the school. I'm a substitute teacher there. My wife is a, is a teacher there. And we don't want to see um, people believe that if you want to enjoy the arts, you have to be able to drink alcohol uh, at those type of functions. And so I am against that. I hope the rest of Hopkinton is too. And I applaud the decision that was made not to grant that permit. Thank you. And Margie Wigan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Will, for the question. I am also a green candidate. I believe that the single stream recycling is very important for our town. I, my guess is that the Board of Selectmen had so many issues that they discussed that they just didn't get to that one and that was farther down the line. I hope that's the situation. As I understand it, we would all be given a big barrel probably on wheels and we put everything in there. I think they do this in um, Newton, other communities. I grew up in Newton. so. Um, I think it's a great thing to do, and my guess is that the selectmen just had other things higher on the list. And as Michael Yumina does, I want to slip into another topic briefly. I think Norman Kamala was wonderful and has done a great job managing our town. That was not what I was saying. Um, I just would like to get answers to questions sometimes, and I feel that he's very circumspect when I <coughs> would like an answer. Thank you. All right. And if you'll state your name and address. Yes, I'm Chris Dietz, Alexander Road. Um, I have been attending, um, you know, town meeting for many, many years now. Just start up by telling us who your question is for. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's for the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been attending town, man, uh, town meeting for, for many, many years now. And I noticed since the implementation of the charter and town manager, the format of town meeting has changed a little bit. And to give you a concrete example, I noticed, for example, like the school budget, um, the people used to vote on each individual line item, and we no longer have that authority. It's like all the line, line items are bundled into one, and we vote either on the whole thing or nothing. So, um, I mean, I find as a, um, you know, a democratic process, I don't find that to be very democratic. And what is your question of them? Um, I mean, 
my question is, it's more of a comment, I guess. I just find that um, I would like that changed. Would you like their opinion? Yes. This? Okay. Brendan Tedstone. I, you got me on this one. Um, I am, uh, when I become selectman, I'd be glad to look into that and, and, uh, and see what we can do to, to make sure that we can uh, reduce costs and uh, maintain the services. Uh, like I said, I've been here 100,000 years and uh, been through all the school systems. The schools are outstanding right now. They were no way near this when I was, went through school here. And, uh, and, you know, obviously the belt needs to be tightened everywhere when we're at a deficit. And um, we, can, we can look at everything. There's no stone goes unturned. Michael Yumina. Okay, uh, I too have noticed changes in the town meeting and uh, that we have extremely large budget items go through that uh, do not allow for nitpicking here and there by the people of the town. I don't care for that very much either. Um, one of the things that I really disliked about that was uh, not having busing for our school children paid for by the town. We had a meeting two years ago and they um, decided that uh, we had free money come back from the state and decided to spend it to buy historical property, which I would not have done. Uh, simply because that historical property would probably have gone for taxes and been absorbed by the town for free. And that money should have been put into uh, paying for school buses to pick up all the children of the town of Hopkinton, number one, because it's, it's a much safer way to reduce the possibility of terrorist problems with our schools. Number two, it's also a better way to uh, deal with pollution that all these automobiles coming in every single day. Number three, the traffic that is horrendous uh, at the school around Hopkinton and which affects all of us and which is only going to get worse when the new school goes into the place that it's going to go in. So we have got to develop a way to manage our uh, school schools so that they can pay for the busing. If it means uh, changing other things, then we'll have to change other things. But I believe it is important and necessary to help diminish the traffic, diminish the uh, problems that we could have with any terrorist attacks. And if you don't think there can be terrorist attacks, then I guess you forgot about Boston already. And no matter where we are, we have to think about these things. And that's what I've got to say. I'll yield the rest. Margie Wigan. Thank you. Um, I agree with you. I looked at um, the warrant, and one of the items that jumped out at me was $10,000 for a fence around the Claflin Fountain. I, my question was, why is it $10,000? I feel like Brad Mayo could come in there and do something fabulous for $2,000. I don't really know fence prices, and I'm not sure what they were putting there. So I agree with you. I would like to see a breakdown of the costs. Um, not that we want to get too nitpicky because then I think town meeting would go forever and I think that's probably why they put it in at that uh, large chunk. Um, but I think there could be a little more transparency and a little more explanation of the um, particular amounts that they're so huge and, and say why does it cost that much. I agree with you. And Claire Wright. Well, I hear you, Christine, and you're not the first person that's expressed that. Um, but on the other hand, we've had a couple of town meetings that went into a Wednesday night, even pushing a Thursday. Uh, there is, as with everything, a balancing act of how we handle a town meeting format for our town government with a town budget that's very large and the desire to get through all the articles. And um, not only that, but these budgets are put together through extensive work within the departments and so that everything comes out right on the bottom line. And were we to begin to start pulling items out and throwing numbers around on town meeting floor, you could only imagine the havoc in the end that this would create with our town budgeting process. Having said that, we're taxpayers, it's our money, we deserve to understand how it's spent and we deserve to have some input. There is input on certain things, like the Claflin Fountain. If this is a CPC project, you recall from CPC, we're able to pull out individual items and discuss them on town meeting floor. But for the larger budget, um, I, I think that there should be a, a public hearing process for the public to 
give input earlier on in the budget process um, so that we don't feel that we are shut out because, again, it's our money. Thank you. And the town moderator candidates have expressed an interest in answering that question also. So, Bruce Carlin. Uh, Dr. Bruce Carlin here just uh, to answer that question. Ms. Dietz, on your uh, first part, the only thing the town meeting gets to vote on on the school budget is the bottom line. If you are interested in the detail, you need to be uh, diligent and go to, which you do, I know this, uh, diligent and go to the school committee meetings and watch as they put that budget together. We usually have a very good uh, description of what's going on by our school committee uh, and our superintendent as to how those line items are spent. And um, to save the time for town meeting, go to the earlier meetings where a lot of this is discussed. And I turn that over to Tom. And the postscript that I'll add to what, what Bruce said is that uh, while the town does set <coughs> the, the aggregate budget for the school committee, through the year, the school committee can move its line items around. So that's some flexibility, which by statute, the school committee has that other departments in town really don't have. Thank you. That was Thomas Carabinian. We have a caller online. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. What is, could you give us your name and address and what's your question? Sure. Thanks, Nancy. This is Ann Burtonshaw calling, and I would like to direct this question to Nancy Richards Kavanaugh, the school committee. Um, I would like to hear uh, Nancy's opinion regarding the state of special education services in our district. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Special education. What, uh, I, your opinion regarding the state of the special education in the district? That's the, correct. I, special education in the district, I think, is I, I have been through the process as a parent. Uh, definitely room to improve. I mean, I, do you have something specific about the state of special education that you were looking for my opinion on? Well, I'd like to know what you feel about um, services as a priority in terms of um, how the budget is, uh, you know, worked out. Like, what emphasis do you feel to be placed on special education services? I think that the emphasis is important on special education services. I think that the students that we have in the district receiving special education services are are most vulnerable and need the most help. I would like to see kids getting intervention earlier. Uh, and I know the school committee has worked on implementing some things, uh, some of the co-teaching practices and other ways they've been delivering special education I have seen as an improvement. I think that the earlier they can get services to kids, the more they can help kids acquire the skills they need uh, so that they will hopefully need fewer services as they get through the grades and then hopefully uh, as they get closer to graduation have more independence and need fewer of those. Does that answer your question? I, it does. Um, I guess one other question I would put to you is, um, you know, I, 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 we have a child who has an IEP and one of the emphasis is that we've been trying to get more um, work and more services directed at is um, specialized teaching interventions. And in particular, um, you know, professional development for teachers in terms of reading programs um, to help our specialization kids. I think pro professional development is important. I think there are so many different asset aspects of special education. It's hard for teachers to get all the skills they need uh, in every particular area that kids need help with. I would like to see more in across the board so that our teachers can deliver the services they need, our special educators can deliver what they need as much as they can in district and have the expertise for some of the really particular problems that in difficulties that kids have to face today. Thank you. Thanks. And I apologize to anyone who may have mailed in a question, emailed in a question, or a couple people in the audience seem to have another question, but because of our time constraints, we really need to move on now to the final segment of the program. Um, this is when the candidates have the opportunity to address the audience with closing remarks. Once again, there is a two-minute time limit, and we really need to hold to that or less. And for closing statements, we will reverse the order. We'll begin with Thomas Garabedian, candidate for town moderator. Uh, again, thank you. This will be much shorter than two minutes. 
Uh, I, in closing, I ask for your vote, and I pledge to make Hopkinton Town Meeting great again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bruce, Bruce Carlin. Not the words I'd use, but uh, I, too, look for your vote. Um, uh, this uh, would be a nice, uh, a nice continuation of what we've been doing. Uh, just make sure that you get out there on uh, next Monday for town meeting. It begins at 7, and then get there on May 16th for the vote. Thank you again to uh, Nancy and the Hopkinton Women's Club and to each camp. Thank you all. And the candidates for town clerk, Henry Kanicki. I love to, to continue the professionalism of the town clerk's office, and I believe my experience in working with the town government for the last <coughs> 20 or 30 years can contribute greatly to that. I also am very, very much pro moving the position to an appointed position as opposed to an elected position. So with that, I sincerely ask for your vote. I come May 16th. Thank you. And Connor Deegan. I just wanted to thank everyone who's supported me and everyone who's helped me to become more active in our town. I've been fortunate to work with so many great people over at the Hopkinton Housing Authority, some of which are here tonight, and one of which is on stage with me today. And I would really hope for your vote so that we can continue to bring young, educated voters back to our town. I would like to use the education that this town gave me in order to benefit it. And I want to do so for years to come. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great evening. Thank you. And candidate for the school committee, Nancy Richards Cavanaugh. Thank you again for the opportunity to come here to, to answer questions and to introduce myself. I appreciate all of the audience participation and even the opportunity to answer a question. Uh, I look forward to town meeting and to hopefully getting your support at the annual election in May. Thank you. And candidate for the planning board, David Paul. Yes, I've heard a lot of comments tonight about how great, how much of a great town Hopkinton is, and I know there's a lot of different people responsible for that, but I just wanted to call out the planning board because there's lots of people for the last you know, 50, 60 years that have spent a lot of time in establishing all the, the rules and um, the way for that we build our town, the way we build new housing developments, the way we build new public buildings, the, our zoning and bylaws. So um, thank you. Look forward to working with everyone. And candidates for the Parks and Recreation Commission, Kelly Karp. Thank you again to the Women's Club and HCAM for hosting this event tonight and for having me here. Um, I'm incredibly excited about the opportunities a seat on the commission has to offer, and I'm thankful to have had the chance tonight to introduce myself. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department provides Hopkinton with high-quality athletic programs, enriching community arts programs, maintenance of our beautiful parks, trails, fields, and common areas, and provides a foundation for many important subcommittees within the town. The Parks and Rec Department has the ability to bring us all together, whether it be on the soccer field, cheering our kids on to victory, or on the common, enjoying a Saturday night concert. It's an important part of our community. As commissioner, I will listen to you. I will help identify the growing needs of our community and work in partnership with the department to ensure they are met in a fiscally responsible way. I will work to ensure our facilities and grounds remain safe and well maintained. <coughs> I will look to expand and off the offering of adult athletic programs and continue to improve upon our excellent offering of youth and cultural arts programs while keeping fees stable and balanced. I would be honored to represent you on the Parks and Recreation Commission. Please vote for me on May 16th. I will not let you down. And Eric Sonnet. Tonight you've heard many, many very impressive resumes. Credentials of the candidates behind me are really quite incredible. But I'm not sure that this election is a revenue or is a reson <laughs> resume-driven election. It's more an election driven by the ability to lead. Hopkinton currently is in the midst of a housing boom that will, that will put in, expand our housing units by 2,000 units by the year 2020. 
2,000 units, children, much more population. This is the area that Parks and Rec plays in. Parks and Recreation deals... <laughs> I'm going to do that at town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the 2,000 units, the increase in population, will require significantly more interaction of Parks and Rec with the community by expanding the very infrastructure that allows our citizens to participate. This is a leadership issue. The decision I think most voters will make is who best with their experience in town government and the things that they've achieved in this area can lead the Parks and Rec Department through the rest of this decade. Thank you very much. I appreciate or will appreciate your vote on May 16th. Thank you. And candidate for the Hopkinton Housing Authority, Nancy Calais. Um, the elders in our community are an important part of our community and I, it, as I said earlier, it's been a pleasure to serve on this board and I would like to continue to do so. Thank you for your support. And candidates for constable, Michael Hayes and Michael Humana. I would just like to say I'd really appreciate your vote and if getting elected constable, I'd be able to join the Mass Bay Constable Association which would give me all the resources and training I need to fulfill the duties that you put upon me. Thank you. And Michael Humana. Okay, um, I just wanted to uh, ask everyone here and everyone at home to look around this room at the people you see before you. Because before you, you see a bunch of really good people, people who have taken the time and will take the time <coughs> if you elect them to do the best job that they can for this town. That is a very important thing. There are very few who stepped up to the plate compared to the population of the town of Hopkinton. And so I would commend all of these people and, and I think that um, everyone here who's watching tonight should give them a round of applause in their homes and uh, uh, be very glad that we have these people working for the town. And that's all I have to say, I'll yield the time. Thank you. And candidate for Commissioner of Trust Fund, Maureen Bumiller. Thank you everyone for attending this forum for candidates and thank you to everyone at home for watching. I'm running for Commission of Trust Funds and I would ask for your vote on May 16th. Thank you. And candidate for Board of Library Trustees, Michael McNamara, who I guess had to leave. Okay, all right. Candidates for Board of Health. Uh, first, Jennifer Flanagan. Who gets to go first, me? Oh, okay. Um, so I think as I'm listening to people, obviously we all love this town. Um, I don't think we would be here if we didn't, right? So that's sort of the bottom line is we all love this town. We all want to contribute to this town. Um, I grew up in a very political family. My father was the Park and Rec Commissioner um, in my town for 15 years. And um, so we dealt with things like nails in our driveway and um, eggs are our house and all sorts of things. So I, I knew when Darlene um, asked me to run that, you know, there was a chance that, you know, n nothing is, is ever as rosy as it seems. But it's really, really important to me to give back to this town. Like I said, I've lived here for 17 years. My kids go through the school system and it's, I, I just can't, I can't say enough about how wonderful this town is. Um, and I think that the other thing that's super important to remember is that most of these positions don't need to be partisan positions. So I think it's super important to remember Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. You just have to look at who is most qualified, who will represent you in the best way. And I don't think it really matters, um, parties at this point. So anyways, and I actually really like the man I'm running against, so that makes it really difficult. But anyways, thank you so much for your time, and I would appreciate your vote. And also for the Board of Health, Philip Cohen. Um, I also wanted to, in terms of wrapping up, thank you everybody for having us here tonight, uh, and to echo a lot of the sentiments. Everyone here is uh, 
uh, wonderfully blessed with wonderful uh, resumes. Um, I would also say that uh, when it comes to running for town office or um, uh, even just participating in town government, the bare minimum is your vote. Uh, and uh, as far as everyone else up here, I think that running for town office, if you are qualified for the position, is your civic duty. Uh, and I'm very proud to serve for you uh, on the uh, Board of Health. And I would hope that uh, come May 16th, you'll elect me to do the same for the next three years. Uh, and I can provide that commitment. My wife and I moved here rather short ago compared to everyone on the, on the uh, stage tonight. Uh, we moved here three years ago. We carefully chose where we wanted to live, having lived in many towns in Massachusetts. And we, like everyone else here, love it here. We plan on staying here. Um, I plan on raising my children here, and um, hopefully for that amount of time, I will continue to uh, serve in some form in the town government as well. So thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. And for the Board of Assessors, Mary Jo Lafreniere. Just uh, want to say again that the Board of Assessors is very much committed to fair and equitable assessing throughout the commercial, the industrial, the residential, and the personal property. They're huge. As the town grows, it becomes a huge task. Every assessor does have to go to school, not just, uh, I mean, I have my MAA as professionals, but if you are elected to the Board of Assessors, you must go to school sponsored by the Department of Revenue and uh, complete at least one course. Uh, in order to stay on the board. Otherwise, you're just, you're uh, eliminated before the th your third year. Uh, and working closely with the Department of Revenue, they check everything, they check the assessments, they check how people are doing, and then working on the confidential side with seniors and uh, people in town that are having problems that, that can come to us for help in, in the exemption area, on the abatement area. Um, is extremely important. So I would like to continue the work and I request your vote on May 16th. Thank you. And candidate for Board of Selectmen, Claire Wright. You know, we always taught our kids, if you care about something, you wanna keep it, you take care of it. And that's what I've been doing for the town of Hopkinton for the last 30 years. I've been working not to prevent change because that's not possible. Change is inevitable. But to find reasonable solutions, ways to preserve our history, protect our character, and to hold on to what makes Hopkinton special in the face of some enormous challenges. Working my way up through literally hundreds of hours in service to this town, I've gained experience and knowledge, and I've demonstrated the commitment that I feel is necessary to serve in our town's highest position, the Board of Selectmen. Those who know me know that I'm a hard worker and a dependable board member. I do my homework. I'm an independent thinker. I have my own ideas, and I'm not easily swayed by the crowd. I'm not afraid to take an opposing view, nor ask the tough questions, and I will always vote my conscience. Above all, I listen. I try to understand the concerns, and I push for solutions that are fair and equitable. My goal is to find the win-win. The Board of Selectmen is a serious position with serious and consequential responsibilities. I hope that when you go to the polls on May 16th, that you will find me worthy to take this highest role, and that I may have your vote. I would be deeply honored to serve you as your next selectman. And also for candidate for the Board of Selectmen, Margie Wigan. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank HCAM, the Women's Club, Nancy, people watching at home, people who came out for your wonderful questions and for having this opportunity for us to share a little bit about ourselves and our positions and our thoughts. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for everyone to get to know what's happening here. I think I bring the strengths of my educational background, my business background, my volunteer background to this position. I have been chair of several committees in town here as well as 
CEO of two companies, two nonprofit companies. Um, when I look at the, the growth in town, I respect the process that has been undertaken thus far, and I would like to be part of the future, part of the thoughtful planned growth to take us into the future without losing the natural resources, the charm, and um, what we all hold so dear, and which is why all of these people are here. Um, I too, like Connie, am uh, sorry, like Claire. I have a friend, Connie, right? Like Claire, right? Hi, Connie. Um, oh, I too will be thoughtful in my deliberation. I too will state my opinion. I'm not easily swayed. But what I would like is what's best for Hopkinton. It doesn't have to be my way. It's not about my ego. It's really about what's best for our town and how do we keep this town the way we love it and not have it change into something that we're, we can't afford to live in or are not comfortable living in. I ask for your vote on May 16th. Remember, it's at the other door, the back door of the middle school. Um, thank you very much. And also for the Board of Selectmen, Michael Yumina. Okay, um, I just want to uh, finish by um, giving a great thank you to the Women's Club for their uh, efforts that they've made to introduce all the candidates. Um, if I were them, I would uh, attempt to hold a monthly forum so that we could bring our elected officials in here and ask questions of them like this and hold their feet to the fire to make sure that they do what they say they will do. Um, I would support that. Um, but I have to say, uh, uh, one of the things that I heard most during the time that I was collecting signatures, probably two-thirds of the people spoke to me about uh, tax management of this town. I had one couple who uh, approached me telling me that they really didn't care to sign because they were moving right out of town uh, because they could no longer afford to live here because of the taxes. And I know the senior citizens are having problems with that. Longtime residents of the towns who are on fixed incomes um, are having troubles. And I uh, will make it one of my goals to make sure that tax money is used wisely, that it will be um, shuffled around if it has to be, that we will find better ways for efficiency, that uh, uh, I personally think that uh, we should establish a better computer system like Google Classroom that the kids use at the school so that they know uh, they can click onto there, the people of the town can and they can see a little better what's going on and have a little two-way communication with the people in those meetings. Because one thing about the school committee, you know, they say you can go to the meetings of the town's auxiliaries and you can sit there and you can listen, but you can't vote. And if you can't vote at those meetings, then you know that you are just a bump on a log and whatever they decide is what's going to happen. And if you're not happy with that, you should be able to make it known and you should be able to vote on those things maybe point by point in those meetings uh, done with the, with the proper uh, IT system that would let people in the town do that. So just a few ideas. I know I'm gone, so please give me your vote. Thank you very much. And the final candidate for the Board of Selectmen, Brendan Tedstone. All right. I open this place and close it up too. <laughs> All right. Uh, my, my ties to Hopkins run very deep. I appreciate our history and our community. Over the years, I've seen what's worked and what hasn't. Uh, running for the Board of Selectmen, why I'm doing it, I want to bring a fresh but experienced perspective to the board. Uh, my kids, Ella, age seven, Brendan, age five, they're just starting their journey through the schools. Uh, our schools are something that we should all be very proud of. Our recent rankings put us up as one of the elite public school systems in the state. It's a tremendous badge of honor, and I hope the <clears throat> which I hope continues for the betterment of the all the kids in the town for a long time. Many are concerned about where our town's heading. It's concerning for me to see the mass recent exodus, the recent mass exodus of lifelong town employees from the town hall and the municipal departments. Losing those employees hurt the town by losing their extensive experience and knowledge of what's made the town as great as it is. My concerns for Hopkinton and Hopkinton only. I have no agenda. I'm not a career politician. I don't aspire to be one. For the people that know me, they'll tell you I'm a straight shooter. Uh, I don't think you'll find a straighter shooter. Uh, my goal is to re be responsive to the citizens of Hopkins and only them. As a parent, you always want to leave your kids better off than you were left. I'm that guy that isn't afraid to shake a few trees to make that happen. 
My voice as selectman will not be that of one of my own, but one of the townspeople that are living here, for the majority of the townspeople that are living here. Um, for the people that are living here that, that have been here and aspire to stay here. Ones that want to create their own legacy in Hopkinton. My Hopkinton is a Hopkinton that makes it hard, almost impossible to leave the schools, public safety, and people of Hopkinton for another town. So I'd like to thank the Women's Club, HCAM, everyone here, everyone at home. Uh, my wife for uh, putting up with all this stuff that's been going on. She's leaving work early, coming home late. She's doing a great job and, and uh, you know, sorry for the next three years, I'm gonna make her continue to do that. So <laughs> thank you, I hope for your vote on uh, May 16th. On behalf of the Hopkins and Women's Club, I would like to extend a special thank you to the candidates who participated in this forum this evening and to our studio audience and television viewers for joining us. I also want to acknowledge the HCAM TV staff and crew for making this broadcast possible. The Women's Club members and high school students who volunteered tonight. We hope you feel this program has been informative and we encourage all registered voters to vote in our town election on Monday, May 16th. All Hopkinton precincts vote at the middle school between the hours of 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. Absentee ballots are available at the town clerk's office. We invite those of you in our live audience to join us now for an informal reception with the candidates. Thank you all for watching and good night. <laughs>